So now we're in a, a, an impossibly small cell, right? And uh, so uh, I, I can almost, almost reach both, like without moving my feet, I can reach both walls. Um, and then it's only another half of my span that way. So this, look at the bed just here, right? And they didn't have beds until after 1947. So just on the floor? They were on the floor on a bedboard. 1947. 1947, so after World right. War II, before they had beds in here. Goodness. So, so really I'm, in the, I'm in the Geelong Prison Museum, uh, and I'm with a truly sensational researcher we've been talking a little bit with now. <laughs> and um, <laughs> this gentleman here, Arthur Skerritt, is somebody that's in my newest Dawn of Crime book, um, Volume 5, uh, and it's called The Colour of Crime. And Arthur Scarra is a fascinating person because uh, he's Sri pro probably Sri Lankan born, uh, and he's uh, a curbside busking minstrel among his positive things. We first kind of find out about him and he's uh, turned, just turned 18, like just turned 18. The way I understand it is he's uh, doing uh, sexual acts on the street to scare women. Is that about the... the yeah, I, mean, I, I don't know a lot about his early life, but um, yeah, I believe he had sort of... And, that, and his story changes so often yeah. with what he himself says in his early and history And that first, well. that first publicised interaction with the law, he goes to Pentridge and they march him off to be flogged. That's part of his sentence. And he's all jovial. And we see this as a theme in his life, is to be jovial and jokey and grinning. And, and kind of paints a picture of a guy who has possibly intellectual disability or certainly psychological impairment but he walks into the flogging room like he doesn't have a care in the world and the newspaper takes great delight in pointing out but he did when he was in there and I'll bet I'll bet he did um, <laughs> I'll let you take over so he was in the Geelong prison yeah so he came to the reason I found out about Arthur Scarab is we used to run a murder tour up in Melbourne and Scarab was actually one of the, the crimes that we looked at so what that I know of him is the murder of John Taylor uh, in the shop in Fitzroy uh, back in 1930. Uh, and that was when he came into the prison system and he ended up down here in Geelong because of uh, because of some health issues and that. And Geelong was a hospital prison for much of his history. What were his health issues? Um, I'm just trying, I'm trying to sneakily look at the board that I've written <laughs> to try and find out, but I can't remember what it was now. Um, it's not really, I haven't mentioned it there unfortunately, but um, I'm but uh, one of the things that sort of stood out with me, especially with his file uh, for here, is the racism that is pretty inherent through. So he was jailed in 1930 for a murder of John Taylor, who was a shopkeeper. Uh, he was found dead on the floor, he'd been bashed uh, the following morning. A lot of circumstantial evidence around it. There's nothing really to specifically say that it was actually Skerritt who performed the murder. Um, but one of the things I found interesting is that Skerritt tried for a number of years to be released, um, and I'm talking like 20 years after it. So he was jailed in 1930 for that one. He died in here in 1953. So that's 33 years after the murder. Um, and I know there was quite a lot of times that he attempted to be released, whether it was through himself or through legal, and the comments from some of the governors and the lawyers from here. Um, you, without being outrightly racist, but you could tell that there was racist contact. They did that, that kind of out of the street. Yeah, no, you're really mad, he's just going to 